de manière certaine qui indique que des combattants syriens ont quitté le théâtre d'opération, des combattants de groupes djihadistes, en transitant par Gazantiep pour rejoindre ce théâtre d'opération du Haut-Karabakh. So And then a few days before, um, I got word that they would make a deployment. And then the, the day that they did make a deployment, I got a photo of the first deployment. I think that there were at, at one point around 2000. Um, and I know that they were shoring up over 2000 additional troops to go there. In rather insidious fashion, Azeri forces were joined by jihadists from Syria and from Libya who were sponsored by Turkey. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, there are 2,000 Uh, Islamist jihadists fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, the groups that are there are the worst of the worst. They've committed terrible atrocities. They've killed civilians. They've committed acts of sexual violence. Uh, they were responsible for desecrating bodies of Kurds in northern Syria. And now they've taken their gangster ways and criminal behavior to Nagorno-Karabakh, and they're committing crimes against humanity there. It's outrageous that this is happening, that the international community is turning a blind eye to it, and that Turkey is its sponsor. As long as Turkey continues to sponsor terrorism, it itself deserves the label of a terror state and to be ostracized by the international community. NATO member Turkey has thrown its weight behind its ally, Azerbaijan, supplying high-tech arms, as well as mercenaries from Syria something Ankara denies. There are brutal reports of violence coming from Nagoro Karba. Accounts of schools and hospitals being attacked, of civilians being injured and killed. Amnesty International and other ob observers have even reported on the use of cluster bombs by Azerbaijan. The use of these bombs by Azerbaijan is appalling. Cluster bombs kill recklessly, they maim indiscriminately. These bombs are banned under international humanitarian laws. Their use must be unequivocally condemned. This is using munitions that are essentially banned through international conventions. It's doing that with impunity. No one's prepared to take it to task. These cluster bombs are intended to inflict maximum harm to civilians. And the fact that Turkey is using them systematically uh, creates a space where the use of cluster bombs is permissible by all sides. And that's not in the interest of civilians in this conflict. It also undermines the rule of law and the Geneva Conventions. So we really should think hard and we should think twice about what's going on and make sure that we're sending the right message and taking the right actions in order to end this conflict. According to information received by the Artsakh Defense Army, the Azerbaijani side has started using chemical weapons containing white phosphorus. The use of this weapon can cause damage both to the people out in the open and to people in shelters. Those who find themselves within the area of such an explosion can receive deep burns. Even the healthcare professional providing medical aid can get burned. Turkey is the second largest army in NATO, and it has a sophisticated weaponry and command and control, and it's using that not to stabilize or to bring peace, but to commit atrocities and massacres. There should be accountability. We should start keeping data of civilians who are being killed, and ultimately there should be a legal process 
referred to the ICC by Russia and the United States to bring Aliyev and Erdogan to justice for the crimes they had committed in Nagorno-Karabakh. If you want to know what a war crime looks like, this is it. This is an Azeri missile that landed on this hospital just today. This wing of the hospital was just about ready to open, and it's not near any military targets, so it's not like it was an accident. It is very clear the military of Azerbaijan is targeting civilian infrastructure. They want occupied our territory and clean this territory from Armenians.